Are we okay? Right then, so we've got another example for sampling. It's got a large number of spectators that attend the football match at a ground in England. One stand contains 1,390 seats, numbered from 1 to 3, 9, 1, 3, 9, yeah. So part A, part 1, describe how random numbers could be sold, used to select A, T, and C. Right then, so I'm going to use my calc now. And I'm going to set it from 1 to 1390. And it's going to choose 80 seats. So each seat number, the random number, will represent the seat number. So the random number is the seat number. I would ignore any repeats until I've got all 80. So I'd use my calculator to do it. Part 2 says, so the ground authority wishes to carry out a survey into spectators' opinions of the catering facilities at the ground. It proposes to ask the spectators occupying the 80 seats selected in part A, part 1, to complete the questionnaire. Two practical difficulties there. Right, so let's have a think about this then. It might be that actually the seat is empty. So it might be that you've chosen seat 400. Actually, 400 is full. It could be that if you think about like, like stands and stuff, it could be right in the middle. It might be really, really hard to get to. So the seat could be really hard to get to. Let's have a think about anything else. Uh, it could be when we're asking people about the catering, they might not bother with the catering, so they might not, might not use the catering facilities. Okay. I mean that's free news, isn't it? Um, you know, I'm sure there's other ones you can think of, part B. So it says a market research company is employed to investigate the amount of interest taken in the sport by the population of the UK. James, a new employee of the company, suggests that interviewers should be stationed outside each exit from the ground with the instructions to interview every 100th person leaving the ground. State the name of this one. Um, so... We're choosing every 100th person, so it's going to be systematic, so I've got a system in place. So that's part one. Give one reason why the results may be biased. Well, I'm only asking people at the match, so they're there for a reason. So they'll be generally biased towards it. Towards the sport. Uh, suggest two practical difficulties. Um, I guess it'd be quite hard to select every 100th person. So it'd be quite hard. Imagine like a massive crowd comes out and you're like, whoa, 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 stay there, let me count you. You're number one, you're number two, you're number, don't worry, number 99, we're getting to you. So no, it'd be hard to count them. To count every 100th person. The team could have lost. And you're trying to stop them to ask them if they like the hot dogs. And they just want to punch you in the face. So you might have some people who are uncooperative. Uh, so they might not want to 
was in cooperating. That's what put me off football, really. I used to love football, but then I worked in a pub, and it was like it became a football pub, and it was horrendous. The violence was just shocking. So, there you go. Town centre pubs for you. Right, do you reckon that's it, or do you think we've got more to us? I think there's more to this. There is. So this one is about our large data set, and it's got all the BMWs. I've got some of the BMWs cars there. Um, so it tells us the mean and the standard deviation. Uh, oh, it's got these little Vauxhall ones. So these are the Vauxhall. Right, so what we need to do is choose a sample size and describe the sample we've used. So there's 80 there, so maybe choosing 10. So I'm, I'm going to go a sample size of 10. Um, I'm going to use random, so a simple random sample. Still going there, isn't it? So I'm going to have numbers from 1 to 80. I'm going to ignore repeats. Right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select my um, my random sample of 10 and I'm going to put them in the calculator and work out the mean and the standard deviation. Uh, I'm going to pause it while I do. Will you please use, let me show you, so we'll set up our run int. Uh, so I've got my run int from 1 to 80, and I'm choosing 10 there. So you get yours. Now I've actually done this before, so I've got like a set of numbers already. So I'm not going to use those numbers, but you use your set of numbers to work out the mean and standard deviation. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pause it. I'm going to, well actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the CO2 ones in for BMW. So that's 145.4. And 53.4. Um, so I'm going to do the Voxel one now, but I'm just going to pause it while I do that. Me again. So I've highlighted the ones uh, that I've used in my sample. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Yeah. I've got my averages there. So I've completed the test. I'm going to comment on it. So if you look, on average, Voxel has a smaller. CO2 are smaller CO2 um, emissions. So on average, Vauxhall has smaller or less, is that better? Less CO2 emissions as the mean is lower. Also, if you look at the CO2 emissions, uh, Vauxhall is more consistent. Now, it could all change this. You do your sample, it could be completely upset. So, Vauxhall is more consistent. That's the standard deviation. Is smaller. Oops, is smaller. Is smaller. No. Okay. Uh, limitations, right, so I've got one minute left, less than that. I'll think some questions on the next page. So, uh, limitations, sample small. Um, now, within the thing, within the, the, the table that you've got, the large data set only uses 2002 and 2016. So, it might not be representative of what's happening now. Might not be representative, and that's us done with that. It's a little bit bitty though the the the, um, the stat stuff, but it's nice stuff. It's just bitty. It gets better next year if you don't like it. All right. Bye.